So very fast, how have I opened this? Uh, the Iman Subtomogram Refined finished, so that's great. Uh, basically, uh, if you remember, we uh, don't, don't execute anything, just watch so that it's faster and I don't take time for, for Anan Estella. Um, basically, if, if you see the, the lower part of the, of the Scythian window, we can see the summary of what we've got. We've got one average subtomogram because we have only one output refined. We have still tomograms. And on the output, we see everything that Eman has been running. Okay, for all the, we gave it five iterations. So it's very verbose. I mean, it, it writes a lot of text inside the, the terminal. But the thing interesting is this. Our resolution is around 30, uh, 29 Armstrong. So good news. In order to see how this uh, output volume is, we would click on analyze results. And this will open to two panels. On one side, we've got a window with all of the particles. Again, we can watch them as a list or as a panel. These are our subtomograms of always. I mean, nothing has changed. But what, what we've got here is the um, output. So if we open it again with Chimera, it should open like now. Yeah, here. I just opened it with, with Chimera, and I can play with the threshold again to get to something that convinces me as a ribosome. And there you would have it. If you check on your own workflows, it should be similar. So thank you. And, and this would be all. So by my side, I have finished. If you have questions, I can answer them in the chat. But now I will give time to to Estrella for her to, to finish this second part of the workflow. So thank you, everyone. Welcome to the afternoon session of this work, uh, workshop. And uh, now we are going to perform another different workflow. I hope you enjoyed the first subtomogram average workflow that we have done during the morning, thanks to Patrick. And now we are going to perform another one uh, with that has some differences uh, with respect to the one that we have done in the morning. So I told you something about it in the first presentation, but, but just to remind you, we are going to work now with a protein of the capsid of the HIV uh, virus. And to do that, we are going to follow this workflow that is a little bit uh, longer than the one in the morning, but I promise it's, it's also easy. And we are going to begin with the import of the tomograms. Uh, we are going to start again from the tomogram. We are not going to reconstruct the tomogram. However, we are going to import also the till series from which we have reconstructed this tomogram. Why? Because uh, I, as you will see, the refinement, we are going to perform it with Reliant. And this Reliant uh, needs the information about the CTF. To have the information about the CTF, uh, we need to import the TLC. Sorry, sorry, Estrella, I, I have oh. accidentally removed your presentation. Uh, okay, don't worry. I, I have to share. Okay, I'm sharing again. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Uh, I guess sorry. yes. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. No matter. So, what I was saying that is that uh, we are going to to do the workflow from the tomogram. We are not going to reconstruct again the tomogram. However, we need the information about the CTF uh, to perform the subtomogram uh, refine uh, with Reliant. That is why we are going to import the till series and the CTF 
uh, that we had uh, compute or estimate for that till series. Okay. Uh, with all of this, we are going to import also the coordinates because uh, in order to do this workflow faster and to have time to do it uh, in this afternoon, instead of picking the coordinates, because you have work, in, work a lot with the pickings yesterday and a little bit uh, today, what we are going to do is to import a set of coordinates that they are already picked. However, if we have time, we will see uh, how to pick these coordinates and how to uh, estimate these CDFs. But for the moment, as our main objective now is to do the, the subtomogram averaging, we are going to take all of these. Uh, just, we are going to just import them. Okay. So once we have done the imports, we are going to uh, compute the CTF, the three-dimensional CTF models that we need uh, for Reliant. And we are going to do it also using Reliant. And once we have these CTF three-dimensional models, we are going to extract the subtomograms. And once we have all of these with the subtomograms, we are going to create uh, an initial model I didn't tell you, but uh, the picking the, the coordinates that we are going to import here are, are directional, have uh, some orientation already. So with them, we can construct the uh, initial model directly. So with that initial model and the subtomograms, we are going to perform a classification. In this case, a three-dimensional classification instead of, instead of a two-dimensional classification as we did in the morning. And then with the result of the classification, with the put particles, we are going to perform the refinement of the initial model using Relay. Uh, well, we have two steps of, of classification. You will see why. And finally, we do the, um, the auto refinement with the Relay. And finally, we are going to perform a small um, post-processing uh, that Will show uh, will show us the the model that we have computed. We are going to place the model that we have computed in the coordinates where our original particles were in the tomogram, and we will display all of this uh, to see where they were and and which um, biological sense can they have and things like that. So more in detail. Uh, just to remind you, the initial model we are going to build is going to be something like this from the coordinates that we will be picked around the capsid of each of the virus in the tomogram. Okay, so the coordinates are already picked, but they have been picked using Dynamo. If we have time, we will see it at the end of the session. And these coordinates has already an orientation. So we can average them already to have directly an initial model. Then we have to extract these subtomograms. These subtomograms uh, are extracted directly from the tomogram, as always. However, to use them to, to run the reliant refinement, we will need to have the information about the CTF. So for that, we will need to have uh, this kind of models three-dimensional CTF models uh, to give this information to rely on. Because in Iman, we didn't have to worry about this because Iman already uh, estimated it uh, automatically. So we don't have to worry about that. However, in rely on, we have to create these uh, CTF models apart and then give it to the refiner. So the CTF models, three-dimensional CTF models, uh, as you see here, they are kind of spheres where the tone rings are. And also, uh, if we see like a projection of this three-dimensional CTF, we have also here where the, um, the missing wedge is. So it's like a mask for the CTF and the missing wedge. Then we are going to perform a three-dimensional classification of the uh, particles. In this case, it's a three-dimensional classification instead of two-dimensional. Because here uh, we don't want to remove uh, like junk particles as in the other uh, workflow. It's not a cleaning because we have picked particles that are already 
in the membrane of the of the viruses that we can see in the tomogram. So more or less, we know that what, that what we have picked are correct coordinates. However, uh, when we see the subtomograms, we can see that some of them are nice and other ones are not so nice. So when we perform the three-dimensional classification, what we are going to obtain is something like this, a class with uh, that looks fine, it is our our protein, it's not our ribosome, sorry, it's our protein. Uh, but we are going to have some of the proteins that are very close to some of the fiducials. So when we uh, see them, we don't we don't see clearly the protein, but we see here a part of the fiducial, of the gold bead. So what we want to do is to remove all the particles that are very close to this fiducia. Okay. And this three-dimensional classification, it will be performed in reliant. Then with the good particles, what we are going to do is a subtomogram refinement also using reliant. As we commented at the beginning of the session, what we are going to use is reliant 3.0, uh, reliant 3. Uh, because this is the, the stable Reliant that we have now. However, we are very aware that there is a new version of Reliant, Reliant 0.4, and we are already developing it. Uh, actually, uh, Jorge is developing it, and it's very, its development is very advanced, but it's not stable enough, because uh, mainly because Reliant is not published yet. I think it's in beta still. So we are preparing Reliant 4 to work inside the Scipion, what Jorge is preparing it mainly, but uh, for the course to have a stable results and everything working fine, what we are going to use is Reliant 3, that we know that works perfectly. So using the refinement in Reliant 3, we are going to get something like this. This will be like the final volume that you should get at the end of this afternoon. And it will be around 27 Armstrongs. Uh, here happens the same as with the first workflow. Uh, the resolution is not so, so good as the one published in the papers because uh, we are, as Patricia said before, we are uh, working with toy data sets, with very small data set, uh, with the tomograms in BIM 4, um, just with one tomogram, and picking just few particles. Because if not, all the, um, the execution will run for a lot of time and we don't have uh, that time to, to perform the complete workflow. So we are working with a toy data set just in order to, to finish it in the afternoon. That is why the re final resolution is not so good. But if you do the same workflow with the VIN2 or VIN1 and using more tomograms and more particles, you should achieve better resolution. Then there is an important difference between Reliant 3 and Reliant 4, and it's that uh, in Reliant 4, um, you uh, have something similar to what we have seen in the morning in Iman, the per particle per tilt. I mean, in Reliant 4, there is some kind of refinement that takes into account the information in the tilt series. Again, we don't have time to run this because it's implied to reconstruct the tomogram from the two series, and you have practiced this on day one, and we don't have time to do completely today. And also because we are working with Reliant 3 that do not have doesn't have that feature. However, Reliant 4 does it have, and it will be integrated in the Scipion, but it's not ready yet. And the thing is that in Reliant 4, uh, what they do in the in the two series uh, or I don't know how to call it, refinement using the information in the TIL series, is that um, similar to the, the thing that Eman does, is uh, take the subtomograms, perform the refinement, get a final result with uh, alignment information for all the particles. And what uh, with that alignment information of the particles, they refine the alignment of the TIL series when they're reconstructing the tomb. But uh, what they do is directly take that alignment information of each of the subtomograms 
and uh, apply it to the till series. And they reconstruct directly from the till series the subtomograms. They like jump the, the step in this refinement of construct the tomogram and restrict the, the particles. But what they do is directly from the till series, instead of reconstruct the whole subtomo, uh, the whole tomogram, sorry, what they do is to reconstruct just the, just the small subtomograms, what they call pseudo subtomograms. They call pseudo subtomograms because they are not real subtomograms as they are not uh, extracted from a tomogram, but reconstructed directly from, a, uh, from the till series. And then once we have our uh, final model, that will be this one without this uh, till series refinement because we are in Reliant 3. So we are going to have something similar like this. What we are going to do is to map back that particles to the original tomogram. As you can see, that consists on in the places where our particles, our original particles were picked, we are going to place our final model in order to uh, know where, where that particle picked, in which orientation, because uh, the position uh, you can see just in the viewer of a uh, picking, but the orientation, well, you can see the orientation in some of the viewer of the picking viewers with uh, an arrow pointing out. But here you can see the complete protein, uh, how is uh, how is placed it in in the orientation that it was extracted. Um, you can this map back. Uh, you can visualize it in two D. But the problem is that in two D the images uh, are superimposed. So it's difficult to see something. However, we can see the three viruses, more or less, and the particles that are superimposed there. Uh, sorry. But you can display all, also the tomogram uh, with the, this map back in Chimera. So you can see it in 3D. There is also a bit of overlapping here, but the particles can be seen better. Uh, they are like, um, like empty here because uh, as you will see some uh, the particles we have picked are around the uh, the viruses but to avoid uh, the missing weight effect we didn't pick particles on the top and on the bottom of the vesicle that that is why it's empty when we do this map back we are recovering just the particles in the position that we have extracted particles we are not getting the whole vesicle and this map back could be useful, uh, as I was saying, just to see where are our particles and if some of them are, for example, uh, in a correct place, but in the other way around, they are pointing to the, to the inside. So we want to remove them because uh, we can see by eye that they are not in correct orientations. Uh, this also can be very useful um, to to think about the biological sense of our uh, of our sample maybe not in this case because we already know that the prote the proteins are uh, proteins from the capsid of the virus so it has sense that they are arranging the the capsid of the virus but for example with other particles uh, they can be free in the I don't know in the cytoplasm of the of the cell or whatever, and when you see them where they were placed and in which orientation, it could be useful for uh, for extract a biological, biological meaning. And also with this map back, well, you can create some figures for your papers, and uh, not like that because this one maybe is not uh, the best one, but we can get another more fancy figures. And to finalize, um, I want to explain you uh, something about the particle filtering by orientation and the removal of duplicates. I know that uh, you saw this yesterday and I think maybe you also you use it, but uh, I want to remember how this works just to, to clarify or to to remember and we didn't have uh, time to use these filters in this workflow but they could be useful in samples that has a similar characteristics that 
uh, the ones that we are using in this workflow. So with the protocol filter by normal, what we can do is once we have particles with, that we have picked directionally, I mean, they have some orientation as this one, the particles are, are the pink balls, and then the, the arrows are the red uh, sticks there. So they are all pointing outside. However, we can have some particles that are picking inside. For example, this one with the gray, uh, green arrow pointing inside. In this case, as we are picking particles uh, that are in the, um, in the surface, in the capsid of the virus, we expect all uh, of the particles uh, being pointing outside the, the capsid. I meaning they have the normal is perpendicular to the membrane of the virus. However, we can have some particles that are uh, once that they are picked or aligned, uh, they are pointing inside. So we want to remove this because we know that this will be this green, this particle with the green arrow. We know that are going to be bad particles because they should be pointing out. So what we can use is this uh, filter by normal that what we will, what it will do is to remove all the particles that, that, that are not perpendicular, that it's normal, it's not perpendicular to the membrane of the virus. Uh, so we activate here the, the filter by clicking in yes, and we have a small tolerance because maybe the normal is not perfectly perpendicular, it's not at 90 degrees, but, but it's at 92. So it's not perfectly perpendicular, but almost. So uh, that uh, is fine for us. So we can have a tolerance of some degrees to not remove the particle that are not exactly at 90 degrees, but are at 93 or 88, something like that. We can change this value, of course. And then we have another filter that is filter particles by the tilt angle. Uh, that means uh, we are going to remove the particles that are affected by the missing weights. I mean, if the if the missing weights is covering like 60 degrees, it's affecting all of this part of the vesicle, the one that is uh, above the orange line in, in, on the top, and the part that is below the orange line in the bottom. So all these particles for its orientation will be affected by the missing weights that will be here. So we don't want to take into account all that particles uh, on the top and on the bottom once we are going to uh, construct, the, to define or to do the subtomogram average because we know that are hardly affected by the missing weights and they are not good particles for that reason. So what we want with what we can do is to uh, um, to activate this filter by tilt angle uh, filter, and we can set uh, the the degrees. I mean, if the particles are above 150 degrees or below 30 degrees, we want to delete them to not take into account. So this is what the this filter is going to do. So if you can see here we have removed the particles that are on the top or on the bottom. In this case, because we did it directly, we didn't pick them, but if you pick them and then you want to remove it, you can use this kind of filters. And then we have the remove duplicate filter. That basically what does is if the automatic picking has picked two coordinates very close, probably they are just one particle. But for any reason, it has been picked uh, two times. So that is what is going to do this uh, remove duplicate protocol. It will uh, see the coordinates of the particles and if they are very close, uh, you can select what is very close with this radius. It will delete one of the two coordinates that are very close. So in this way, we, we don't have uh, repeated particles. And I think that will be all from my side. So uh, I pass the, the scene to, to Ana Cuervo, that is a very expert use, uh, user of uh, Cyclontomo, and will tell you how to do this workflow that we have briefly explained. So thank you. 
Thank you, Estrella. If someone can give me the power to present, please. You should be able to present now. Thank you. Because I guess you can see my screen. Thank you, Estrella. So as, as Estrella has already said, now in this second part, we will be working on this NPR, which is from the very well-known HAV dataset from Briggs Lab. We will use subtomograms that have been picked with a vectorial picker. In this case, it was we used Dynamo. We will generate an initial model, as Estrella has already said, using a restricted alignment, uh, uh, an initial model with Relion 3, and then we will perform a restricted alignment also with Relion 3. And we will perform 3D classification also with Relion, and then the, the map back to place back the, the aligned subtomograms into the tomogram. So the workflow, as Estrella has shown also, looks something like this. So we will start for the beginning, which is the imports. We will need to import quite a lot of things. So we go slowly. The first, first thing that we will need to import is the tomograms. So you, you are already uh, experts in importing tomograms because you have already done it with Estrella, uh, with uh, Patricia this morning, and also with David yesterday. So we'll use the same protocol. And we will, this, this tomogram was reconstructed using the Tomo 3D program that was explained in day one. And we will also import the coordinates that were picked with Dynamo. Uh, and they were picked using uh, uh, Dynamo as it was explained in day two by David. And once we will have these two things, we will verify that everything that is imported is, is good. So we will open the 3D mod to see our viruses with their orientations, with their oriented particles, and Eman also to see uh, also the particles that we have picked. Okay. So let's go to the machines. I hope all of you got access to the machines again. And we will be open again, Scipion. And we will create a project. So it will be day three of Fermon. And I will just copy you the tutorial on the chat. OK. So you are already familiar with, um, with this space. So we will move to tomography. And, okay. and then <coughs> we will import our tomogram. So the path to the tomogram is the same as uh, you have seen this morning. So we will move to data, day three, HAV, and then you will see all the files and um, here there are more files than this morning. So the tomogram is the TS01 MRC file. So we will select it. And the pixel size in this case is 5.4. This tomogram is also being bin uh, to be in four, so we can work with it. And we will leave as before all the rest of parameters by default, and we will just press execute. Okay, so we got our tomogram. We are going to import now the set of 3D coordinates. So this is here also next to the, the previous one, Tomo import set of coordinates 3D. And we will also click to the folder, go to search to data, day three, HAV, and then the coordinates are the coordinates SQLite file. So we click on it. The pixel size is the is the same one as we have done. And we have put for the tomograms so is five point four. The box size 
where these coordinates have been picked was 96. And we need to rely those coordinates to the chromogram that we have just imported. So we click in the in the magnification and then we will select or just import the chromogram and we click to execute. Okay, so until here, everything is okay. Everyone got the coordinates. So we will just check that our coordinates look okay. So for this, we will click on the button and we will open it <laughs> with, the, with the right uh, click mouse. We will see, I, I will go slower, slower. thank you. <laughs> Sorry. So everyone's got the coordinates important. I will wait. <coughs> okay. So those of you that have already their coordinates, please go to the summary part on the bottom and, and you click on the right button of your mouse in the in the outputs and you will see all the possibilities of the viewers that you you can have to to visualize this so we will start by the tomo 3d data viewer so you will see the orientations once again as uh, patricia showed you this morning you will have the the box and you need to double click on the name of your tomogram It might take a while, so be patient, not like me. Okay. Okay. Yes, I open it hundred of times. That's me. Yes. Okay. So here you can see the, the coordinates. So if you click just uh, slice mode, because if you load the tomogram, it will take a while to load and the directions, and you can just change the view. You can see that for this uh, time, we have select three viruses. <clears throat> and you can see the coordinates we got this arrow pointing outside so it, it indicates that the coordinates are 3d coordinates that got a, a direction as david and Jorge explained you yesterday okay so then we will see our uh, coordinates also with iman so we will close here and we will close here and no, I, we don't need to save our coordinates. And uh, we will open Iman. And once again, we will double click and it will launch Iman. So you can see also distracted articles. Okay. So we got three groups of coordinates. So we can see just one here, but if you move, you will find the second box. That's another virus, that's a third virus. And somewhere in the back, there should be also the particles that we have picked. Ah, they are here. Ah, wait. I think my screen resolution is too big now. Okay, um, so you can see here all three viruses plus this that I have selected, and we can show them. Um, 
we can go through the slices on the on the side with the slider and we can see all particles in the particle where well, you can see that some particles are black this is because the um, the model the mesh of the model with demon uh, with a dynamo uh, selected also particles which are outside the <coughs> the tumor and it make the whole mess and and that's why they are black but you can see that we got side views we got the end of views and some some particles that are close to gold beads that are the ones that we might get rid of during the 3d classification after okay so we will close this close this and we will move to the next imports and those are difficult ones so uh, the next thing the next part as we were we were saying is that <laughs> we will need to have the information of the of the CTF and uh, in order to 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 perform to calculate or a CTF 3D CTF model that rely on needs for the Sutomarana braiding. So for this we need the information from the missing wedge and this information is in the in the till till series. This is where the till angles are. And we need also the information from the estimation of the focus that we perform using IMO CTF plotter, as was explained in day one. So we will need to import those two things: one till series, the till series file, and the CTF uh, estimation file. So we will start by the till series. Um, so for the till series, when we will move to the to the folders, you will see that we will have, uh, we will use this time uh, another approach different from the one that uh, Federico showed you the first day, because we won't use the mdoc file. That way you will see how do we proceed when we don't have the chance to have an mdoc file. So we will need in this case to have <coughs> in the same folder, the T-series images and a .tlt uh, file with the, the information of the T angles that are have exactly the same name. And we will we will need a special parsing that even if we got just one till series, we will need it that is called like this. So curly brackets ts dot ali. So in some of your computers, maybe you will have troubles to find the curly bracket. So uh, please be patient with that. And uh, then <laughs> we will we will import the the CTF importing the dot city the, dot the focus uh, file that that will be depending on the on the team series so let's move it okay so to import a team series we will click on the first here <coughs> and we will search for our team series which will be on data day three HAV and we will just stop at the folder because as I was telling you before we will need a special parsing so the, the file that we are going to select it will be the dot ali but we need to write in a specific way in the pattern here so we will need to write as we were saying before <coughs> the Yes. So I think in my computer it's up here. So T S dot Ali. Okay. And then we will select that we will use the TLT. Okay, so I, I see that there's lots of things in the in the chat, so I will wait for you so everyone arrives until here. I think it's fine. There's it's no fine? Okay. Yeah. okay. Let's say I posted the same pattern you, you wrote. So. Yeah, 
Yeah, the thing is that maybe you cannot copy to the DNC. Okay, so that's the part. Okay, so we will copy all our parameters. So 300 kilovolts, 105,000 for the magnification. The pixel size this time is the unbinded one, so it's 1.35 because are the till series. The till series angle degree during the magnification was 85.3. And the dose per image was three. <laughs> okay. As everyone come to here, we will press execute. Okay. Mine is done. I will wait, yes, Victoria. <laughs> so if you could not copy the pattern, you can check in your keyboard for the curly brackets. Yes, Dimitri, we need to fill all the parameters as we are not providing the end of file, so the, the protocol will crash otherwise. Okay. Yes, Bram, this is the Align series already. Okay. So, shall I, shall I move? Is everything okay until here? Has everyone managed to import its still series? Everything is okay? Everyone find the curly bracket. Okay, so we can see how this looks in the meanwhile. So I just clicked on analyze results and I'm open 3D more. So, be patient with the viewers because it's also a bin one. So, yeah, it needs to read the 41 images have been one, so it may take a, a while. That way, we that time everybody to, to have it still series. Yes, Victoria, till access angle is 85.3. This time, Bram, we use for the computation of the tomogram 
uh, the SEER method from from the Jose Jesus program, Domo uh, 3D. Is the, the, the seed in this program is has a better quality and a better uh, quality of the final reconstructed tomogram. So that's why we use that one. In in Rely on 4, it won't matter because you will just use your tomogram for picking and then you will restrict your particles from the till series. In in Rely on 1, you try to, to reconstruct the tomogram in Rely on you try to reconstruct the tomogram with the better software that you got. Nova CTF will be the best one, but this takes a lot and you cannot see the virus as well. So that's why we use this one. So you can see this is our field series that we have imported with lots of viruses and it's already aligned. Okay, so we will close it and we will move to import or ctf file so this is also here in the import part in import tomo ctf yes so once again we will go to the folder and we will go to data day three hab <laughs> and then dot the focus file and we need to assign this um, the focus to the T series that we have just imported. So we go to the magnification and we select or freshly imported T series and we press execute. Okay. Has everybody arrived till here? We have all the four imports that we will need. So we will move now to the uh, subtomogram extraction. So we will need first to run the protocol that creates the 3D uh, volumes of the CTF, which is a rely on tomo protocol. You can, you can run this protocol creating in ideally, you will, you will run it creating one CTF volume per subtomogram, but we got about 1,000 of uh, coordinates, so it will be a lot for, for us now. So we will do the, the sim simplest uh, way to do it, which is calculating just one CTF volume for the tomogram, so you will just create one volume. You need to have exactly the same size in pixels as the subtomograms that we will be extracting before, uh, after. And, and that's all that we need to know for this. And, and we will also run uh, directly after the extraction from tomogram. And as to, to show you the, the versatility of a siphon, this time we will use the one from Eman, the, the protocol the extraction from Eman, instead of the one from Dynamo that was shown by Patricia this morning, uh, specifying the voxel size to 96 pixels. Okay, so that's what we will do. And we will move to, to the machines. So <coughs> the simplest way to find all protocol is control F, rely on Domo. And here you got all the protocols that are already from Reliance. So we will start by the CTF 3D estimation. Double click. You will need the file of the coordinates. So we got we click in the magnification and we select the coordinates that we have imported. You will need the information of the estimation of the CTF. So we will click on the magnification and we will select or CTF data. <coughs> and it will need the box size as we were saying is 96. And as we were saying also, we will do this per volume because if we work per sub volume, it will be too much for, for, for us now. So we will press it 
execute. And it will, as it just has to need to create one uh, missing wage volume, it will run quite fast. Is. And then we will extract all particles. So control F, Eman, Tomo. And extraction from tomogram, double click, and we will select coordinates. This time it allows us to extract from the coordinates that we have imported, but we want the coordinates that have already assigned the volume of the CTF. So we, it will be the uh, rely on Tomo's 3D CTF. So we will select the first one. Yes, Dimitri, the, the CTF, we estimated using CTF plotter with IMO, and if we got time at the after finishing with the subtomogram averaging, we will show you how, how we did. And the box size is 96. And in the process, we would like to invert the contrast because we are more used to see the particles of white or black, and we will normalize it. And we will press execute. <laughs> so that way, we will have our 1,018 subtomograms already with associated to one uh, CTF uh, volume. So while it is running, because it will take a little while, we will show you the next step. So once we got our four subtomograms, we would like to average them to have an initial model. As Estrella has already explained it to you before, uh, the subtomograms uh, were picked with a vectorial picker, the dynamo, and those it, it got already an information in the in the in the orientation so just by averaging we should get an initial model uh, like that will look more or less like the <coughs> the capsid the viral capsid region okay so it ended so we will click in analyze results and you can see what our subtomograms look like once again if we you can see the different slices because they are volumes. Okay. So until here everything is fine. We will move to reconstruct our initial model. Okay. Am I going too fast? You mean Dimitri as we shown this morning with um is, is just yes. so in access slices, yeah. Yes, I guess it's something due due to the software which is used, right? So Reliant doesn't have this option like in Iman. No, it's, I think it's the is the, the, the structure, the viewer of the structure which is displayed in a different way, but it's the same thing. Okay. So as we were saying, we got also tomograms. And now we will use a protocol from Relion also to, to average all them without alignment, just average them. And that way we will have an initial model. This initial model might not be perfect, but it will have already uh, uh, something like a HAB capsid. Okay, so let's move back to our machines. And so, with the control F option, we will type rely on Tomo. Okay. 
and we will use Domo Reconstruct protocol, which is the second one. And we will select all subtomograms that were just, just extracted with EMA. The HIV capsid got a symmetry of C6, so we will take advantage of that. And we will keep the rest of the parameters by default. And we press execute. If you can't use the in, but uh, if you can't use the control F, you can search for Relion here somewhere in the. It's because my they they change the the quality of your screen so it's bigger for you and and I cannot go down. <laughs> and and it might be command F as Estrella said. So we'll wait so it's already finished and so if, if we click in analyze results it open the slice viewer but you can click in no matter which slice and then click chimera on the top, and you will be able to see it with Chimera. Okay. As Patricia has already explained you this morning, you can play with the threshold. You can see the C6 symmetry, and you can see that we got the, the so membrane of the HEV and then the capsid group. So is everyone arrived until there? And meanwhile, there's a question, a couple of questions on the on the chat. Okay. One from Sara Alvira, which is a skin um, about why are you choosing uh, one package or another to go through this workflow, considering that. There are different packages like Iman, Rely on IMO, IMO, and so on, who has similar protocols for the same processes. It really, really depends on, on what we are doing. For example, for this afternoon, for the the, the refinement of the of the subtomograms that Quran already an orientation, um, it is uh, really well established with rely on how to how to restrict the alignment and so on. And this with the man is more complicated. So that's why we have to send these for the extraction it really the, of the subtomograms, dynamo or iman, it, it doesn't really matter. So it really depends on what's your project and you may choose one or another. And so the, the chat goes too fast and, and and I cannot read everything, but but I think yeah, there's there, there another, was another question. question, Jorge. Yeah, regarding uh re, regarding the shape of, of the structure of Tain. Um I, Dimitri is is um pointing that maybe it looks a little bit flat. Yeah, well it's uh it's an initial model, Dimitri, is what it is. <laughs> Just from averaging, not not uh, aligning anything. And well, the final one, it will be flat also. So, but yeah, it's not perfect. 
So if everyone has arrived until here, I will close Chimera. Um, also, and then we will the ne our next step. It will be the classification. So we will perform a three D classification. So in in reliable, it is not recommended by developers to do in Subtomoran average and at the same time alignment and classification. Although the protocol will allow you to do it, but most likely, if you do this, you will classify your subtomograms based on their missing wages. So it is better to perform first a step to really align your subtomograms. In this step, we will just run five iterations with the same sampling. So it will take about 10 minutes, something like that. And then we will run a classification protocol where we want a line, we will just classify. So we would run this in two different steps. So for those of you that are already familiarized with the uh, rely on in single particle and rely on single particle in, in Scipion, you know that is a is a protocol that got lots of tabs. So we will be we will try to be very slowly in, in, in here because it may be confusing. But um, the, 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 the important things to know here is that for the first part where we will run this uh, route alignment of our particles, we will need to select the symmetry because we got symmetry. We will take profit of it. It will run much more faster than if we run with a C1 symmetry. We, we will need to specify to the protocol to classify, to, to align because otherwise you won't do it. So it's very important in the of something to click yes in the alignment. So I would review this with you in the machines, but just to, to let you know a little bit of the parameters. And in this case, very, very important, our particles, it got already an orientation. We don't want the program to start searching in all the directions. We can restrict the search in the phi and tilt angles with respect to the to the to where the, the particles have been picking. So, in order to do this, we will restrict in the additional parameters, we will need to, to type this command, minus minus, and I will write it for you in the chat, minus minus sigma tilt three, which means that we will allow the programs to, to move with a standard deviation of three, which is in, in radians that will be equivalent to 15 degrees. So according to the, to the angles that they got already or particles, we will allow them to move in the till um, uh, C angles from about 50 degrees. And we choose three because it's also the parameter that Reliant uses by default for these, uh, for these uh, arguments. Okay, so that's the, the very important thing to know. So let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> So we will do control F and we will search for rely on to move. <coughs> and we will check the subtomoran 3D subtomoran classification. Double click. Okay, so in the first tab, we will need to select our subtomograms. So those are the ones that we have extracted with Iman. Okay. Also very important, by default, it gives us three classes. We don't want three classes, we just want one. We are not classifying, we are aligning. So one class. Okay. As input volume, we will choose our initial volume that we have just reconstruct, which is the first one you got. Rely on tomorrow reconstruct. In the symmetry, as we were saying, HAB capsid is got a symmetry of C6. We will start a low, low pass filtering or initial model to 60 Armstrong. Okay, so I will move to the second tab, which is the CTF. 
in the CTF, we may leave as default, but uh, or subtomograms have the CTF corrected face flip. So we will check here. The result will be a little bit nicer. And the reference has also been CTF corrected. Okay. In the optimization, we won't do 25 iterations because we don't want to sleep here. So we will just do five and we will leave the rest of the parameters by default. In the sampling, we will tell him, yes, please perform image alignment. And as the subtomograms got already an orientation, we can move to three point set for the for the initial sampling. In the computation, we can tell the program to put to load more particles for the calculations because the machines may allow it to do it and it will be a little bit faster. I think we checked with 10 and it was okay. And of course, we would like to run with GPU because otherwise it would take a long time. And our machines got just one GPU, so it will be the serial one. And then the additional parameters to restrict the movement Minus, minus, sigma. Okay. And I will write for you here. And then, if everything is okay, we'll press execute. Okay, is, is everyone running their alignment? Or may I show the tabs or? So it would take a, a while. I don't know if review with you the options. Already do a small poll, so it would be, I think, about 10 minutes to run. A little bit slow. So it is in the, in the, Browse folder, you can see how is it going. So it's still in the zero one. Yes. So in order to to reconstruct the the tomograms, we we perform the correction of the CTF with IMOD CTF plotter, and uh, then we use this information brand to to correct the ctf with a uh, imo in the in the field series and then we used <coughs> then we used a uh, the program from a uh, jose jesus the tomo 3d to to reconstruct the tomogram with the sear algorithm so if we got time afterwards we will show you how to correct the CTF manually for this for this series, but I don't know if the protocol is that long to 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 launch ourselves into that.
Okay. Look if you want, we can we can recheck the parameters. Yes, Ram. The, the tomogram was corrected using once we got the, the estimation of the CTA. Um, in IMOD, you got a protocol which is CTF correction. So you can give him an input of T series and then the, the estimation file of the CTA. And then it will it will correct it will generate a file with the CTF uh, corrected in the two series. And uh, and then yes, we will reconstruct with this uh, corrected T series using the programs that um, Vilas and Federico showed you the first day. In this case, the Tomoran was reconstructed with the uh, um, Tom three. Yes, Carlos is asking if the sigma tilt and sigma psi option are kind of local refinement. Yes, it's just that the or or subtomograms is got they got already a previous information, so they got already some uh, angles in the in the alignment. It got like a priori information. So what it does is that in the in the direction where we know that they are thick, it means a uh, if this will be the virus with perpendicular to the member, we, we won't allow the, the subtomerans to move a lot in this direction because otherwise they won't follow the, the the curvature of the membrane, nor in this direction, which is still so they will keep on following the, the curvature of the of the membrane. The good thing about subtomeran averaging is that you can take advantage of the of the information that you got from the from the tomogram in your in your subtomograms. You know that the the particles will to look uh, to, to point to the outside of the viruses. They they, they, they they cannot be the other way around. So you, you take advantage of this. So let's see how is it going. Still in the zero. It's the first iteration that so in the in the here in the bottom, in the output log, you can uh, you can see what Relion is doing. So 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 we might check if something is going wrong or not. And in fact, it's it's in the first iteration. And um, so the first one is the one that it will take longer. The other will be much more faster. But it's much one. Okay, so I think more or less everybody is back. Okay, so we will see the results of or uh, first step of the of the classification, which was the the alignment. So for this, we, as you can see in the output, we got uh, we got the subtomograms and and the average. So we will click in the average and we will right click on the bottom and we will open it with the data viewer. And this will display the slide. And if we click on the on the volume and we click in the icon of Chimera, 
we are able to see or or new aligned volume. So you can see it has improved a bit. We start seeing some some features already. No machines with one work with two reliance at the same time, Pablo, because they, there's just one GPU. But the next step will be the classification, which just will use the CPU, but you will need the results from this one to run it. Yes, why we are not using auto refine? The question, we, we don't wanna use auto refine because auto refine will, will run until it, it finds that there's no we could we could have used it, but but it will run much more longer because it will it will auto increment the sampling, and uh, and it will run until it, it finds that it cannot improve anymore. So for purposes for the classification, which is the step we are in now, we just want to do a rough alignment, just five iterations, which as you saw took us about ten minutes, which is already quite long. And and then we will run the classification. And the last step will be the auto take about an hour. So that's that's why we didn't run the auto refine. The box size use ticks, uh, Dimitri, which is the where we extract the dominance. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. So this is this is like subtomograms. The next will be the classification. So and just give you a brief introduction about the parameters that we will use in the classification. So. <laughs> So, uh, uh, by the way, also differences with the with the alignment that we perform in this classification step and with the one that we will be performing later on in the auto refine is that it does not perform gold the standard, so we cannot calculate the resolution accurately, and it does not perform, as we were saying before, automatic incrementation of the sampling. So we just run five iterations. So for the next step which is the classification, we will use the, <coughs> the, the, the um, uh, a line already, the, uh, use uh, to classify with 10 classes. And as we will need to modify, we, we will run uh, more or less the same protocol as before, but we will need to use as an input the, the output from the previous one to give them Ten classes, and then also to tell him not to perform the image alignment. So, if we move back to our machines, the first thing that we need is to select the subtomograms and the average from the from the, from the previous uh, classification. So, for this, we need to make a sub. Uh, We will do control F. Oh, I think I think I lost the control of the machines. Maybe can you see? Can, you see? can someone see? Yes. Okay. Okay. I think the machine is also, but the machine is not working properly. Okay. So we will search 
we gain reliant promo classification or we we may copy sorry i uh, i i i think it's better to copy <laughs> sorry for this it's because my machine is not going very fast so Okay, so we will copy. Okay. And then for the subtomograms. We will give them the subtomograms that have already been classified. For the for the volume, we will give him also the one from before. Sorry, Anna. And then, I think in, see, I think in input subtomogram you just put the average also because I think you missed the step. Uh, of we need to save it. Yeah, just write this there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We need to. We need to. So I will just save it. Sorry for that. It's because my my machine is going like uh, pretty bad. <laughs> um, we need to. Yes, we need to to do the stuff setters because otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. So to do the subset, we got. We got the average and we got the subtomograms. So we will click in the subtomograms and we will click on particles. And then we will have the particles aligned. Okay. So that way, the, the following protocol will allow us to to select it otherwise it doesn't it doesn't allow us so sorry for that so you need to to type in analyze result and then it will open you uh, a page with the subtomograms and another one with the with the volume average volume so if you select the subtomograms where well, you will see the 1018 subtomograms aligned and you click in particles you can set you can make a subset and with this subset we will be able to give it as an input for the following protocol okay okay so if my machine allows me we will close this Anna? Uh, yes. Sorry, we have we we have to do this for the particles and the average subtomograms for both it, things. Oh, you can do it for both, but the the average is 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 okay because the the next the Scipion can see it is just the the aligned subtomograms that are not observed. So only for the particles. Just for the particles will be okay. You okay, can do it for both, but. Okay. So okay. So everyone select yes, you save the particles brand, yes. You make like a sort of subset so Scipion can select it. Okay, so everyone got the subset of the particles? And then we can select them as an input. Okay. Okay, 
So now we got our second step. We will classify. So we, we don't want one class. We will select 10. And for the rest, we will leave everything as it is in this first step. So input subtomograms, the subset that we have created from the previous protocol, which are the aligned ones. Input suit volume, the one that has come out from the previous uh, classification alignment. And uh, 10 classes. That's the thing that we need to modify when we copy the, the protocol. Then we need also to change In the sampling, we need to say, no, we don't want to perform the alignment. OK, I'll, I'll lower then. I go slower because I see lots of people are getting lost. Um, I so, yes, Tamara. So I'm I'm following perfectly. I have the particles aligned, but I didn't have these uh, subtomo classification saved as you have on okay. your screen. Yes, I Is will. Is that an this. issue or? Yes, yes, you, you will need it for the next step because otherwise, yes, I will go one step back. Sorry for that. I will I will repeat. I will close this. And so in the classification that you have run before, you click on Analyze Result, and two windows will pop up. One window will show us, hopefully, yes. One window will show you uh, the, the average. And if you move it, if you drag it, there's a window underneath that will show you a size of 1,000 something subtomograms, yeah. which are the, the ones that are aligned. Yeah, that's how I, I um, average the particles. Yeah, so those are your average particles. So you click on them and they will begin blue. So it means they are selected and you make particles. Yeah, and that, that, I that allows that. Ah, that's that good. I, I thought you, 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 I thought you no, did. No, no. Um, you have from this also a blue um, box that goes downwards instead of to the right. Yes, on your screen. My, my computer, yeah, my computer is 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 slower. The, the 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 blue box is the one that I'm creating now with with this. Uh, so once that ah, we got okay. this safe. If you copy the previous protocol, the classification, we will now run it. If you copy, that's the blue one. So I will redo it. And we will receive together. So you click on the classification that you have already run, right button, copy. And you see your previous thing. And then we can modify it to run the classification. So this second time, we will rerun it, but not with the alignment. We don't want to align anymore. We want to classify. OK, so in the inputs of tomograms, we don't want the, the ones that we have extracted. So with the, with the magnification lens, we will select the ones from the subset. Then the volume, we don't want the one that we have reconstructed in the beginning. We want or improve the one that we have just aligned it. So we select it. So it's the rely on Tomo 3D Sotomar classification. You see, you got a sort of arrow there. If you click on it, you see one item selected. And then we got our input volume or inputs of tomograms. That's OK. And then we need to change the classes because we don't want 
one class, we want 10 this time. Okay, so we should put here 10. Okay, until there, everything is fine. Everyone is following. Okay. So for the next of the, of the tabs, the, the, the tab of the CTF, we will leave it as it was. The optimization one, we will leave it as it, as it was with five iterations, but the sampling, very important. We don't want to perform the alignment, so we will click no. And for the rest, it doesn't run in GPU, so it will take the, the CPUs. And and we can run as this, okay? So we press execute. Okay. I will erase that one that I copy. Okay. Yeah, so that was exactly the item that confused me because everything else was fine. But yes, thanks. Yes, Rita Mares, because as the computer was moving yeah, yeah. slowly, I, 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 I skipped that. Sorry. Totally, totally get that. Sorry for bothering you. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, Ram. Is because the, the the classification doesn't run in in GPU, so when you click in don't align automatically, it takes this out. It's because Relion uh, doesn't run in GPU if it does not align. So it should take very, very long, but a few minutes. And your results may be different from the ones that you are seeing in the tutorial or the ones that Estrella saw, because each classification is a little bit different. And uh, But in fact, what we will look for is something that looks like the, the HEV capsid, that will be the good classes. And some classes may have, when you play with the threshold, may have some densities on the top. So those classes it may be particles that are very close to fiducial, to gold fiducial. So, so those will be the path for the alignment for the for the to refine. So we will roll them. Anna, um, when Lou is asking why not to align, uh, well, I see Estrella has already answered something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can I can answer also while this is this is running. Thank you, Pablo. So so as Estrella is saying, we can we can do it in the same time because uh, rely on Tomo will allow you to do it, but uh, rely on developers don't advise you to do it because if you align and classify at the same time, more likely your your classification will be driven by the missing wage. So you will classify your 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 volumes according to their missing wage orientation. So it's better to do it in two different steps. No, I, I don't think, Bram, that the that the resolution in the summary is uh, meaningful because for for the moment we did not uh, perform the all the standard or anything. So, so I think it's 
is not really meaningful. Well, they how to refine, yes. Maybe during this waiting time, um, feel free to ask anything, even if it's not related to to this practice. Uh, maybe some more general question. I don't know. Feel free to take this opportunity. You, you may those. I guess everyone has launched the classification, but otherwise you might want to put more more threads also because I put very few, but you may. Put twelve as is in the in the tutorial. Yes, you are right, Evany. I I put three, but you could put well. Your machine has sixteen. You could put until twelve if you have not launched it yet. Bram, the, the dot alley is the way IMOT names uh, image files. It's actually um, uh, an image file, which is an MRC file. But and those are the image of the TIL series. Are the TIL series already aligned? So the, the mm -hmm. alignment is applied. So those images are rotated and shifted.
yes, Luca, when you win the classification, I will select those of uh, those of, that you can see that when you open them with Chimera, you can see the 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 the, the volume that looks like the the protein of the HEB capsid, and if you increase a little bit the the threshold in some of them, you will see that sometimes it will appear like a density on top, which are coming from the fiducians. So those I won't select them. And hopefully the ones that got more particles will be the good ones. Hi, Hannah. Uh, yes, Scipion doesn't, it has the, the eTOMO program with IMOTH, and in, in, in that interface, in the manual one, you can use the patch tracker. So, yes, you can you can align without fiducials, but manually for the moment. And I don't know if there's other options, maybe Pablo or Vilas can tell you more, or Federico, it is there. Um, yes, yeah, so from, from now on, uh, only it's possible to fiducial uh, less align uh, manually in the ETOMO interface, as Anna said. Uh, I don't know. Uh, too much other fiducial less um, approaches, at least not that popular. So, by the time being, I, I, I don't know of any other else. It, it, there is a way we need to approach that, has, that is the fiducial less automatic alignment, but it's not obvious because uh, most of the time it requires from user user interfaces so so we are by the time being we are limited there apart from that I, i'm not sure but i i i think that the iman has the iman reconstruction uh, is able to align fiducialless uh tomograms or some kind of protocol inside the iman batch um if I remember, if I remember correctly, it takes the darkest regions of the of the tomogram as references, uh, like simulating the fiducials to have some reference that can be tracked from one um, fr from one uh, tilt image to the other. Yeah, Iman, I, I use Iman reconstruction and it's quite easy. Just uh, fit it with the tilt series and it does its thing. Uh, the only thing is, it's just um, a whole thing inside. So if result is not nice, I'm not sure if you can tweak it or adapt it. But uh, it doesn't require fiducials and, uh, and nothing else but the tilt series.
Yeah, and mm -hmm. Aretomo is already integrated. I haven't used it in Bram. I don't know if you have time. Bram has also helped to beta test already, uh, already a CPM Tomo. Um, I'm not sure if you had the chance to try it and I don't know, to give some feedback about how it works. So, okay. Or or classific or classification has finished. If you want, we can continue and then because the last step, the auto refine is quite long. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh... Okay. So I guess most of you have finished also the classification. So if we click on analyze results. Can see we got once again two tabs one of the averages and the other with the number of particles that are in each one of the of these averages so we can select either the one that we well, that we like for example we can select in here the 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 first one that in my case got 800 particles and click with Chimera, so we can look at it. Okay, so we can see that in in my case, this is a bad class because you can see here that we got something that looks like the the HAB capsid on the bottom and on the top, a very horrible density, which is coming from a fiducia. So that class that got most of the of the sub volumes in this case, I cannot take it. I hope you, in your case, it worked differently. And um, so I will check the other ones. So this one for me is bad. Oops, sorry. So I will see the next one. Okay, so the next one for me is good. It's got 145 sub volumes. Okay. And you can see it's got the membrane, the, the capsid protein. And membrane, but no much got, density on the top. You got See? a cake, Anna. It looks like a cake or a <laughs> gofre, Robert, to call it. <laughs> okay, so for me, that one would be a good one. Um, I might see some other ones, but the other ones are much more but less, very few particles. So I don't think they are quite nice. And it's true that, that we got not lots of time to run the auto refine. So having very few particles might be benefit for us, but we can, we can check them. But it's true that with 19 particles, might not be really nice. More noisy but it's a good one also. So you can you can check your classes, which will be probably different than the, the, you cannot see the number of particles, Luca, because you got two tabs when you click in Analyze Results. You have a tab where you can see the subtomogram classes. And, and in this case, you can see the number of particles and another tab where you can see the, just the averages. So in that in that tab, you cannot see the number of the particles. So you, you, you search more likely for the one that says subtomogram classes. Okay. So in my case, I will select the that one that's got 145 sub volumes. It's not much, but those are good ones, and we won't have much time either to run the auto refine. So so that way it will run faster. So is everyone being able to properly 
see their classes and everything? Okay, this is this is my my window that is frozen. Maybe it's because of our internet connection, which is very bad today. So yes, you should select the the best particles. So you you click on them, they will become blue, and then you click in particles, and then you will select them in a subset and you can put them a name, whatever. So I name them good. Okay, I will close, close, and close. So someone can check Marie Jose's machine. Okay, so our tree is here is growing. So now we have already performed the 3D classification. We are ready for the for the alignment, the final alignment. So we will we will use for this the auto refine. So as a as a as a difference with the with the with the previous previous thing we will we, we will use gold standard and, and we will determine the, the, which will allow us to determine the resolution and we will perform an automatic incrementation of the, of the sampling. And if everything goes well, at the end, we should have something, something like this uh, with about 28 Armstrong resolution. So the cake, like Pablo said, so for this, once again, control F, rely on the mode. And we will select this time the auto refine, which is the last one. And so we will need to refill up all the parameters, but they will be pretty much the same that the ones we have filled up with the, for the classifier, so that way we will review them. So as inputs of tomograms, we will select the subset that we just made, the good, which is got in my case, 155 subtomograms. As an input volume, If I open the classification, I can see there are lots of volumes. I cannot remember which one was it, the good one. Wait for a minute. Otherwise, we can just select it. It will be the, the easiest way. I think it was it was the, the second one, which will be the three. But we will check it out. Let's see if we... So, okay. If you read up on the classification, and we will click on analyze results, we will have again the two tabs. And the good one that I selected was the this one here, the ID nine. Okay, so I can either select it based on the ID in the other tab or select it searching in the protocol after. So the nine will be this one, average. So 
coverage. Or we can just give it for the auto refine the one that we got before also. So I will research for my algorithm. Inputs of tomograms. For the input path, I will select the average that I have just saved, or you can select also the, the one that you aligned previously, as you wish. The symmetry, as we said before, is C6. For the CTF, if we click in advanced parameters, we will tell them that our subtomograms have been phase flipped because we had corrected the CTF with IMOD and the reference also was corrected. In the optimization, there's nothing to, nothing to fill. In the auto sampling, we will down this to 3.7 because they have already a previous alignment. In the compute, we will tell them to put up to 20 particles. We will use GPU acceleration using the GPU zero. And once again, we will need to restrict the, the movement with the sigma yield three. Okay, and sigma, we will review and sigma C. Let me just launch and we will review everything. Okay, so I will just execute and I will repeat everything. Okay. Okay, so for the inputs, we will we will use the subtomograms that we have select that had the, the alignment that we like from the previous protocol, and we can either select its average or either use the average from the from the previous alignment. That's as you wish. So to run the auto refine, we will search for the protocol with Control F. Auto refine, so rely on Tomo, subtomogram auto refine. So, as input subtomograms, you should put the subset that you just made from the classification, which in my case, I call them goods and are 155. As input volume, you, you should use either the one that you just um, as, uh, you just aligned uh, before or the one that corresponds to this class. In my case, I, I, I selected also from the previous protocol and is this one. You should change the symmetry to C6. This is the symmetry from the HAV capsule and it will go much more faster. So that's for the first tap. For the second tap, for the CTF, we will tap on advance and tell them that <coughs> the, the data has been face flip because this is how we reconstruct our tomograms and the reference has been CTF corrected. Uh, you cannot hear me? No one is hearing me or? 
Okay. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you too. Okay, sorry. Okay. So this the reference is in CTF corrected and the data has been phase flipped. In the optimization tab, we we won't select anything. For the auto sampling, we will down this to 3.7 degrees because all uh, subtomorans have already been aligned and and also we have performed this previous step of alignment with this uh, angle. And for the computation, we will we will put 10 particles to calculate and, and we will use the GPU and in our machines, the GPU is the zero. And then in the additional parameters, we will put the sigma field and sigma c. I will I will put this so we will restrict the alignment. Okay. So has more or less everyone managed to run to launch the auto refine and then we will press execute. So this protocol will take an hour. So, so in the meanwhile, we, we can we can repeat this, or we can see the in the tutorial. Normally, we were moving to to see the CTF uh, plotter manual, but okay. So let's review the input files. Okay, so I will restart from the analysis of the classification, or what should I do? <laughs> okay. So the classification you, you managed to, to follow up to here, so everyone more or less run the, the second step of the classification. Okay, so okay, so in this in this step, so to see what the classification looked like, we we clicked in analyze results. So in this step, we have already aligned, and we are just seeing the classification of the particles. When you click in analyze results, you will have two windows. One window will show the averages. And the other window will show the subtomograms that belong to those averages. Okay. So, if you want to see them, they in each for each one of you they might be different. And uh, so, to see them, what I do is that you just click on them, and then. Click Chimera. Yes, Marie Jose, I can, I can try to, to resummarize. So what I'm doing is that I'm I'm reviewing the the analysis of the results of the classification. So if you remember in the classification, there were two steps. The first step, <coughs> sorry. So the first step was an alignment of five iterations that took us a while. And it was before the pause, and 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 we made five iterations, 
and, and we end up with an average volume. We select them and we give the subtomograms that had already this alignment to a second step, which is the classification. So in this step, what we do is that we give those subtomograms to, to the to rely on. So it will classify them in 10 different classes, but it won't it won't align them. Okay. So after after this this second step, this is the one that I'm analyzing now, the classify subtomograms step. And to, to observe this, I will restart. So once the protocol has finished, you click in Analyze Results. The machine is quite slow. OK, so you will have two windows where you can see 10 averages, which are the 10 classes that we ask sometimes we, we can we may have less if uh, the program finds that that you, you don't need them so to, to to show the results I can see that in my case in your case it might be it might be different so so in my case the class that got more subtomograms is the first one which unfortunately the audio has gone Can you hear no, me? I can't hear you, Anna. You can't hear me. Yeah, I think it's okay. okay. Yeah, me too. Okay. So, okay. Great. Thank you. So, uh, I will say I will, I will show it. And to do so, I will select it and click on, on Chimera. Okay. I'm sorry for that. So, so what we do is that in order to observe the results from the classification in the in the in the panel window, you select the volume and you click on Chimera, and Chimera will display, and it will show you your your volume. So, in my case, in your case, it might be different because its classification is different. My class with more sub tomograms <laughs> um, is not the best one. So so when I I did it So when I move the threshold you can see that my machine is not cooperating either okay um so you can see that that we got the sort of cake that Pablo says, which is the HEV capsid and on the top you can see a strong density. So this is coming because some particles were selected close to gold fiducials. So uh, <laughs> this this class is not good. You may want to select it and reclassify it, and then you may you, you may save particles because for sure there are good particles that belong to good classes that have end up here. So so the best, if if I was working and I had time, I would select this class and I will reclassify to save the particles. Unfortunately, this is not the case. So this class I won't select it. And I will select the other one that is got just 155 Soft tomograms, but when I open it with Chimera, so it became blue, and then I click on Chimera, and then Chimera will display it, and you will see that in this case I cannot see the <laughs> the strong density on the top. But oh, sorry. Okay, so I will select this class and to do so, close Mira and I will click on this and I will click on particles 
and I will call them builds because I got already one that is called my build. And this is this is belonging to the class nine. So I can also select the class nine here and save it. So that way I will have the class nine with its particles saved. Or either you can use also the, the other one that we have just aligned as initial volume. So I will call it average. Okay. So that way we have selected all sorts of tomograms that are, have been classified and don't got, don't got the fiducials and the average that uh, is generated by them. And then we close. And we close and we ready to to run the auto refine. So I click on auto refine and I will select as input of tomograms the ones that I have just selected, so the 155 and 145 that I have just selected. As an, this will be the subtomograms as the reference input volume. I might want to select the, the average <coughs> that, that, that belongs to these subtomograms, or also I could select the average that that we just did before in the in the classification, which was really nice. So, so you select them. It is important to set the symmetry to six because the HEV capsule has got the symmetry. In the tab of the CTF, we will tell them, we will move to advance and we will tell them that the data has been face flipped and that the reference has been CTF corrected. For the optimization tab, we won't touch anything. For the auto sampling, we will tell him that we will move to starting in 3.7 because we have already aligned them. For the computation, we will calculate for 10 particles. And for the GPU, we will set the GPU to zero. And in additional, very important, remember the minus minus sigma C3 <laughs> minus minus sigma we also so it will restrict the, the movement and then you can just press execute and that's that's it is everyone more or less arrived to to launch the auto refine uh yeah i just have a question whether it matter or not um first i think we just did the input the other way around first the tilt three and then this uh, uh yeah it doesn't three. matter the order it doesn't okay. matter the order no just wanted to be super yeah. sure <laughs> thank you yeah You're welcome Tamara. for the rest did more or less everyone manage to launch the auto refine Um, if I already started a set of refinement with another subset, I mm -hmm. shouldn't start another one, right? Because I could overwhelm the machine. It depends if you have already one that has finished because you just got one GPU. So, so mm -hmm. you can just run one at a time. And if I pause the other one? If 
if you post it uh, unfortunately through, yeah post I, um in, in many cases it, it will not work some i mean every protocol is made of a step which is this counter uh -huh. that you see when it's running and sometimes a protocol has a hundred steps or it has three only uh and you can if you stop it it will stop in the last finish step and for yeah. those for for Relion, i think the steps are really huge so probably the the, the first one is just preparing the data for Relion. you will save that time but then you will you will start over with the second step and in this case i don't think it will help okay because i i just think i chose the wrong data set with the um density with the on top. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. but you can just stop i it think and... well it doesn't matter if you don't reach uh, an ideal result actually you're not going to i mean we're not yeah, yeah i I was I'm not thinking, I just wanted to know. I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I don't think my my auto refine will look really nice because I just got 145 particles. So so optimally I, I should have re-refined re the classification as a contemporary mm -hmm. run a run of the classification to try to save more particles. There are very few. Yeah. Yeah, I have one set of about uh, eight to nine hundred, and the next larger set only has um, eighty-one. So, yeah. So in that case, what you should do while we wait, we can we can do it also, is select. If you happens to do the same to me, <laughs> you can select that one. The bad ones, the ones that we know that they are bad, but they are most of the particles and for them bad. And we can reclassify them. And that way we will save particles because for sure there are good particles that had fall in that class. I can run this in the background, mm -hmm. yes. And and then if everyone has finished, move to the to the map back. Or shall I wait? Still, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. That will just launch for me this classification again. So in that case. I just copy the last step, the one from that got 10 classes, but instead of giving the aligned subtomograms, I will give my bad class that I just said. I got the resolution very big, I cannot see, <laughs> but it's this one. Okay. And, and I will relaunch it. That one would be maybe nicer. Okay. Anna, uh, yes. I have one, one question. Why are you doing this with the bad ones? Are you doing this with the bad ones also? No, no, I'm doing it just to wait for you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Perfect. Okay, I need only two minutes more, more or less. Thank you. Anna, is, is then, um, so what happened? I would have. I'm not an expert in this area, but what if you reduce the number of classes? Wouldn't the the right ones be together, or it doesn't make sense? Instead of asking for ten classes, just asking. I for... think I think it, I will do the opposite, Pablo. I will ask for more more <laughs> classes, and maybe that will split uh -huh. more and then get more. But it, it really depends. Each classification is different, so. So yeah. normally in real life, you need to run several classification steps to get a good thing. I see. Thank you. As we are doing now with the other thing. Mm -hmm. Let me remind everyone that 
uh, we've, we've said this uh, several times, but this is not an, a, a real, an actual, I mean, data is, 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 we, is actually deposited in Empire, many of them. So it's actual data, but not it's, a, it's not a, a real scenario. You usually deal with uh, more T-series, the four more tomograms, the four more particles. Um, you quite often may work in, in a less bin data. So all this is a bit fake in a way to be able to cover all the functionality. Otherwise, uh, we will spend so much time waiting for for process to finish. Um, and then we will not be able to cover the whole workflow. Just bear that in mind. Uh, you will work with more than one tomogram uh, for sure and more than one till series. Um, but that uh, this way we can we can show you much more things. So we can see the results of my auto refine, which run really fast, so it's a bad thing. I don't think it would be really nice. <laughs> so I will click on analyze results, and it will give us the FSC core. It will show us the subtomograms, and it will show us the volume by slices. So the yeah, resolution is about 29. And if we click on no matter which one of these slices, and then we click on Chimera, it will open. So you can see that it's nicer than the one that we had before, even though poor guy got only 145 subtomos. But you can start to see the structure of the HEV capsid protein. And uh, if my computer wants to turn, you will see the other side. <laughs> I think I asked too much to, to my computer, la launching again the classification for you. And Chimera just doesn't work properly. But more or less, you managed to see your results of the auto refine. Have some of the auto refines finished for you, or? Okay, so you can see the, the double layer and the, the protein capsid. Okay. So everyone, so Anna, more Luca, or less how Luca, to... Luca has a question. Um, uh -huh. I can read it. Uh, so... Yes, also, see, I, 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 I'm seeing it, Pablo. See, so if I understood correctly, the auto refine job takes the particle selected at good in the, good in the subset and refines against all the subtomograms aligning. No, it just takes the subtomograms that have been aligned and classified, the good ones, and it performs, uh, improves the, the alignment. So we we, we we select those subtomograms that had already been alignment aligned in the classification and that don't have the fiducials on the on the top, and we select them and then we launch the auto refine so it will improve their alignment. Did that does it answer your question, Luca? Okay. 
So maybe while while your if everyone has more or less launched the auto refine while your auto refines finish, we can we can see for the CTF plotter and then at the end look at the map back. How do you what do you think? That would be a good idea. Everyone has launched the auto refine already. Okay, launch at finish has most people launch and finish the auto refine. Okay, so while your auto refines finish, which may take a while depending on how many particles you got in, in the last classification. I will, I will close all this and we will review how to check the results. And and while this is this is moving, we will we will show you because Vilas and Federico promise you to see the CTF plotter manual. So, so this is not an easy interface, but we will try to show to you uh, the best we can. <laughs> so, so I will jump the map back step because we need the results from the from the auto refund for this, and 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 we will move to we will move to to the iMod manual CTF estimation. Okay, so. You saw this already with Federico and Vilas in the first day, but you run the step one, which was the, the automatic one. So Vilas also launched and show you how to launch the, the manual one, but we will review it and we will see how it looks for for the TIL series that we have worked with, which is the one from, from this tomogram. Okay, so the interface is a little bit tricky. It's got lots of windows. And uh, let me show you just the, the things that we usually touch. <clears throat> so it is very important that the, the window knows that your expected the focus uh, to be about what you what you think it is. For this, for this still series, it's about three. We can also play with the, with the pixel size and uh, try to pin in the till series may help us to get signal and we will see how it works this also so in this window you may see the the different uh, till series with the, the expected focus and then you can also if you have a slice that don't got enough signal you can you can mix them you can average them so you got enough signal so we can see the you can see the the, the CTF uh, uh, better, and you can estimate to different zeros. So so from in the in the in the low uh, angles, you may see four zeros, but in the in the high tilts, sometimes not. So it may help you also to play with with the number of zeros that you can see. Okay, so if we go to the machines, we got. <laughs> or teal series here, and these teal series are at being in one. So the first thing that we are gonna do is that we are going to run and we are going to use more in the being so wonderful and nice at the beginning. So we, we we can do both. We can do first, so instead of, we are going to write the tutorial. So so we will search for uh, IMOD normalization. It is normalization, which is this one. And we will select all these series. 
and we will make a beginning of four to them. So we will increase our signal and we will execute. So that way we will have our teal series, but now instead of being at being one, they will be at being four with a increased pixel size. And then we will do control F again, I mount, and we search for CTF plotter, manual CTF estimation, step two, and we double click. We will give a input this series the ones that we have linearized to four and or expected the focus value when be six thousand will be three hundred three thousand. If you remember from uh, Villas and Federico explanations, that will uh, group the teal series images so we will put zero so we will see all the teal series images and we will execute no no hannah you don't need to stop the the auto refine be before doing this no because this 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 won't use the GPU or anything. So this is just to show you because in the beginning we have we have imported the CTF, but we didn't show you how to how to calculate it. So Vilas and Federico promise you that we will show you the the um, manual estimation of the CTF. So so here we go. So if you you will have the pop-up with the teal series and if you double click on it ctf plotter will launch okay and so by clicking in the different slides you can see the estimation of the different series so in the ctf window in the main window you can see the the estimation in green and the experimental value for the ctf in pink and as you can see they they the, the aim of this protocol is that both follow quite well so as you can see this is this is the case for for our, for most of the things so in fact even though we have run it manually at been in four it ran quite well maybe in the in the size, this is not the case, so you can check like this. And in order to try to save this, we may try different things. We may try to, to refit the zeros by clicking start and you see that the, the focus value that is floating is five. So we may force it to move to three but sometimes in this in this case it won't work <laughs> because we have done it quite a few times. So in those cases, what we do is that we sum this last uh, uh, tilt image, the minus 60 to the previous one. So how to do this? You can in here you can see number of views to fit one so if you do two you can see that is starting to fit and now you got already a value so we can store it in the table and then of course we will so this 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 line will have the the estimation for minus 60 and minus 57.27 so we will need to delete those lines otherwise of ctf file good and 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 with this we will save and close
tools and very important clicking CTF Tomo. Because otherwise it doesn't generate the outputs. So I got already my output so I can close it. And if you remember by clicking in analyze result, you can see the plot and see if it's okay. And you can see the, the values, which as expected are more or less about three. And and you can see that more or less all the all the values for all the tilt angles are looking okay. So this is how the manual CTF plotter works from IMO. Just to make the CTF. Of course, the best thing is to do it with the with the Ambin till series, but then you need to be more patient and to play with the with the pixel size to increase the signal. To remove the fear still, yes, of course I will. I will do. What I will do is that I will relaunch it with the original pin in one. That way you will see how it looks like. Okay, so I will just relaunch it with the pin in one till series. So you will see how it looks. Not different pin in, which are input. So that way, this time will be very nice, very horrible. This is normal. <laughs> you see that, or the focus estimation, it looks like zero, which we know is not good. Why is it? This is because we are doing it with the pin one T series, which don't have much signal. So in order to fix this, we move to zero, double click. Zero is also horrible. We click to spec the focus. It starts to improve a little bit. We can tell him that we want to try to fit more zeros. And sometimes with this, it works. But you can see that the signal is not very nice, especially for the other deals. So when, in those cases, the best thing to do is to tell the problem to change the meaning. So it will do the same that we have done outside for, for you. And you can see here that now we can see the signal. We can repeat the auto fit. And now it's OK. Still, the minus 60 is always bad. So for this, we will do as we did before, we will increase the number of views to feed, and now it works. And Sarah was asking us how to delete because we got now uh, somewhere. Uh, we need to store it in the table first, sorry. And then we got this view that is from angle 57 and 60 together. So we need to remove the 60. So I click in the 60 and I did. And that's it. And then we say, okay. So with this, I will save to file and close and close. And very important, not forget to click in CTF here last because otherwise you won't have output and and and. When you have done lots of steel series, it hurts. So then you see that in the output, you, you got one. That's OK. So then you close. And, and that's it. So how are your auto refines doing? Did you finish the auto refines? 
gray. So I will repeat how to observe the results of the autorefine, and then I will move to the map back. Okay. Okay. So to, to observe the results of the autorefine, we will click in the autorefine, analyze results, and then you will have several windows that will pop up. One is shows you the subtomograms, and other one shows you the volume, the average volume by slices, and other one shows you the resolution that in my case is about 28 something, 29. So in order to see your volume, then we will click on this, no matter which one of the slices, and then we will open it with Chimera. And then Chimera will pop up and will show you your volume. So it should look something, it might look something like this. So you will see already better the definition of the capsid protein of the HAV layers. Okay, doesn't matter if your autorefine hasn't finished because we can use other of the uh, average volumes, the ones that we perform in the first step of the classification to, to do it. Looks more like a crown, you think, Tamar? Maybe. <laughs> If we increase the first hole, it becomes more like a cake, yes. <laughs> okay. So I will move then because we got only 20 minutes to, to finish the course. So I will just move to the map back if everyone agrees. Doesn't matter if your auto refine hasn't finished, we can use as a as a volume to do the template or the other one. Okay, so I will close the Chimera. And just to remind you, so for the, the map back, Estrella told you a little bit, told you a little bit before, but what we will do is that we will run a protocol which belongs to XMIP, in which we will give him the alignment that we have already performed, or a um, final volume or final average, and uh, the tomography. And what the, the program will do is that it will put back copies of this final volume uh, to the positions of the of the three viruses that we that we had select. Okay, so. The final results will look something like this. We can show it. We will show how to show it by slices and also in Chimera. And, and it is useful to once uh, to see the biological distribution of your particles, so to see the biological context of the protein that you are studying, but also to evaluate the quality of the alignment. As we were saying, it is not possible that we have particles that are perpendicular to the to the surface of the of the viruses because because we know that the proteins are not like that. So if we find some particles that are like that, it means that the alignment has failed. So it can it can it can be used for both. Okay, so to launch it, we will move back to the to the machine and we will do the control F and we will tap map back. Let me separate it. Uh, map back to Thomas. Okay, so we need to select subtomograms. So it allows us to select all subtomograms. So in my case, I, as my autorefine has finished, I will select the subtomograms from the autorefine. In the case of those of you that want to run the map back or, and the autorefine is still running, you can do it with the first alignment that, that you have performed, the first 
classifications there. So in my case, I will select in subtomograms. The auto-refine, my auto-refine. As a reference, I will also search for my auto-refine. Okay. I need to keep the original tomo. And then I don't want to invert the reference contrast. I, I do want to remove the background because otherwise it's very difficult to see anything. And besides in our virtual machines, if we display the tomogram plus the sub volumes, it may be tough. We will choose the copy mode and to be sure that we are able to see or, or volumes, we will increase their signal 10,000 times. Okay. So has everybody followed up to here? So as input, I will select subtomograms because those are the ones that I want to plot back, the ones that came out from the autorefine, if your autorefine has finished. For those of you that the autorefine hasn't finished yet, you can select the subtomograms that you had selected as good in the alignment, in the first alignment of the classification. As the reference, do you select a, a nice average? In my case, I will select the one from the autorefine because it's the nicest one that I got. In your case, you may want to select this one, or if it doesn't, it hasn't finished yet, you can select the one from the first step of the alignment and the tomogram. And then it is important to, to ask to, to remove the background and to multiply the reference 10,000 times. And then we execute. Sorry, I can't find the file with uh, output set of tomograms. From the auto-refine? Um, um, yeah. Your auto-refine hasn't finished yet. No, no. And I, so then, what? Then, then uh, we will ask uh, Sergio and Arma to help you find it. But um, can someone go to Tamara? Pachi will go to your computer. But you should select then. The, the one that, that you did in the in the first step of the of the classification which was the alignment okay so the Relion tomo 3d sub tomogram classification yeah okay then I think I've but, got it that that will be but but you know for in this step we needed to save the sub tomograms. So for the subtomograms, you need to select the subset. Okay, so mine has already finished. So if I click in analyze results, and this will display with I think so with I mode is not really nice, but can see them already, but it's nicer if we open it with the with the other viewer. By default, it would open as IMO. I will move in the. I will click right button, and I will open with data viewer. And I will double click because I think it's nicer than the viewer division from IMO and hopefully my viruses will appear. So this is how we can see the, the slice mode. And as you can see, all the viral proteins are pointing to the outer. So, so the alignment went good. Besides, we restrict the movement. So it would be that, but it did the opposite. So you can play and open the different slices. Uh, 
And then if I select one, I don't know if Kaimira will open us from here. Ah, she. So. So here you can see your three viruses. And you can move them. And um, it's true that because there are several particles, they are a little bit overlapping. Maybe we will need to, to crop boxes a little bit smaller so it will look nicer. But here we go, the output. So is everyone managing to see the output of the map pack? So in the tutorial, we saw you also uh, how did we select those viruses from Dynamo, but because of the lack of time, it is not possible to show you this here, but we use the same protocol that David showed you uh, yesterday to select with Dynamo. And, and we picked uh, ellipsoidal vesicles and create the message, and that's how we, we obtain our particles. And you got all this information in the in the tutorial. And um, I don't know if there's any other questions, or shall I review some steps for someone that got stuck some somewhere? You're welcome, Brad. I don't know if I can show you something more. If not, we can finish the course here. Okay, if there is no more doubts or anything uh, you want us to, to explain further. I think we can close here today. You're welcome. So thank you very much, Anna, for this workflow.